too, and they kind of got off the mark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about um, lab two, and I'm going to talk about um, what a correct solution for it is. Uh, one thing that you need to realize uh, when you're coding in Java is that the Java syntax isn't the only thing that's a consideration. The other consideration is that you're following proper object-oriented principles. You're following proper object-oriented design. And for that reason, even if you have the correct solution, in other words, your output is the right numbers, um, your, your solution might not be satisfactory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to detail what would make for a satisfactory uh, solution um, for this particular problem. Um, what I will do is I will start this problem for you. Now, I realized two minutes ago that this machine doesn't have Java installed on it, so I can't actually compile and run it, but I can talk about the code. Uh, for you to get full credit on Lab 2, um, I'm going to do a good portion of the code. All you need to do is take and enter my code in, flesh it out with what the missing methods are, and turn it in. So I'll give you a head start on that one, and I hope that will sort of jump start you so that you can get past uh, and continue with the other assignments and do them correctly. Um, all right, so let's look at what Lab 2 was. In Lab 2, the task was the following. The task was to create two classes. A lab2 class, which has the main function and calls the other class, and a rectangle class. The rectangle class, again, is the real, um, you know, uh, the, is the centerpiece of this assignment. This is where most of the work is going to, going to go into. Um, the Lab 2 class is really just a class to test out your rectangle class. So we'll have a couple test cases in it, but the purpose of the Lab 2 class is simply to um, run through some test scenarios to test the um, rectangle class that we create. Keep in mind what it means when we say we create a class. When we create a class, we are creating a software model of a particular entity, and we're modeling one of those particular entities. So a rectangle class is meant to represent one rectangle. All right. When we define a class, remember what a class has. A class has both methods and attributes. I think the book says uh, a class can do things and it knows things. Attributes, another word for attributes would be characteristics. So in this particular case, Attributes for a rectangle, what do we know about a rectangle? What are, what are the qualities of a rectangle? Well, the qualities that are relevant in this particular case are the width and the length of the rectangle, the two dimensions of the rectangle. Those are the two qualities that we're interested in that we uh, need, to, need to record as attributes. What are some of the things that a rectangle can do? In other words, what are some formulas or processes or um, calculations that can be done concerning rectangles. Well, we can calculate the perimeter of a rectangle. We can calculate the area of a rectangle. All right. So if you notice, the, the problem description says to create a rectangle class that has these methods. Set and get functions, we'll talk about those in a minute. Then, a calculate perimeter method, which calculates a perimeter based on this formula. Calculate area. And finally, uh, a function that returns a true if it's a square 
and a false if it's not a square. All right. So these are the methods. These are all the things that we expect a rectangle to be able to do. We want to be able to ask a, a rectangle, what is your perimeter? And the rectangle object then can go through the calculation and come up with what the perimeter is. Likewise with area. Likewise we want it to be able to tell if it's a square or not. So as we can see, this rectangle class that we're going to create, again, is going to be representative of a single rectangle. And it's going to be the template for all rectangles. And these are attributes of all rectangles, the sides. All right. And then um, the, the methods, calculate uh, perimeter, calculate area, is square, get side, set side, and all that, are things that we're going to ask the rectangle to do. All right, so actions. All right. The Lab 2 class really is just to have something to hook this to to run it through the tests. Um, an old word that we, we would sometimes use for this would be unit testing. In other words, we're creating a component. We're creating a rectangle component that we can plug in to wherever we need a rectangle. And then we can call the methods on that rectangle to do the calculations we need to do. Think, for example, if we were a home improvement shop. You know, there's all kinds of rectangles in, in the home improvement business. There's, there's floor space, there is ceiling space, there is, um, you know, the, the, the roofs, the sides of the house, and so on. All those are different rectangles. So if we're calculating, say, the price of carpet, we may want to ask the rectangle, that is the floor, which is a kind of rectangle, what your area is, and use that number to calculate the price of a rectangle, or a price of carpeting for that particular rectangle, that is for that particular floor. So the idea is, is we want to create a component that we can plug in anywhere a rectangle is needed that can do these things, because these are the things that a rectangle has as attributes. These are the things that we want a rectangle to be able to do, calculate perimeter, calculate area, and so on. Now, we may plug that component later on to a user interface that allows someone to pick the kind of carpet they want and all these different things and then would use the rectangle to do the calculation. But for now, we want to test to make sure that our rectangle component is correct. And how are we going to do that? That's where the Lab 2 class comes in. The Lab 2 class, its purpose is to define some test cases. Your main function should contain sufficient test cases to test all methods. So, we need to be able to run a test case to make sure that we can set the sides, get the sides, calculate the perimeter, calculate the area, and finally tell if the, um, tell if the rectangle is indeed a square or not. All right? So that's the two classes we need to create. Um, the rectangle, again, is sort of the centerpiece of this. It's the class that we're using to represent a rectangle. And we're going to create objects or instances from that class. That is, we're going to create specific rectangles. You know, the rectangle that represents the floor of the room I'm in would be a specific rectangle, as opposed to the concept of rectangles, the template, which is the class itself. So let's go in and let's define this. By the way, if I do seem a little tongue-tied, I am uh, speaking in an empty room. And that's not as easy as it looks. Uh, I notice people walking past the room uh, are kind of giving me funny looks. So it's kind of hard when there's no one uh, listening. So I, I, you know, I, I think I'm getting a little bit tongue-tied because of that. Anyhow, let's go in and let's take a look at creating the classes for this. All right? So what a lot of people did, again, incorrectly, is they did something like this. They went into Notepad and they created their class. Public class Lab 2, let's say. and created the main method. I 
it's spelled main wrong. Let me go and correct it. And then put in all the calculations for all the rectangles here. So they did something like So people did something like this, where they put all the calculations in the main method. Now what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this is when we're done, we are not going to have any kind of component that we can reuse. We do not have a class for rectangles or for anything else. We simply have a routine to calculate these specific rectangles and display the results. That will do us no good. We can't reuse that any other place. All right. So we need to create then a class for rectangle that we can plug in anywhere that you have a rectangle that you need to do calculations on. This class then will simply create instances of that and run it through some tests all right, to make sure that the methods that we've created on the rectangle are correct. All right, so we do not want to do something like this. Some people took this a step further and still were on the wrong track and created a rectangle class and in the rectangle class there was a method that looked something like this and outputted all those things. All right, what we're going to do though is we're going to go and create a rectangle class that is truly going to be a component. That is, we're going to be able to use this rectangle class any place we need to do any sort of calculations on a rectangle. Again, the object-oriented concept for that is encapsulation. Everything about a rectangle is going to live in this one place. All right? And therefore, anything that we do with a rectangle we are going to uh, use this one class for it. That gives us a lot a big edge as far as maintainability goes because if there was a bug, if we did our area calculation wrong, let's say, or a perimeter, or there was some other feature we wanted to do uh, for rectangles, we could put it in the one place and then it would be available everywhere. We wouldn't have to go in and change, make changes to a bunch of different programs. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to define my class for rectangle. All right. What are the relevant characteristics for a rectangle? Well, as we said before, a rectangle has um, two sides. We could call it height and width, or we could call it length and width, or we could call it side one and side two. Doesn't really matter. A rectangle has two sides. We're going to create those as attributes within the rectangle because again they're characteristics of a rectangle. We're going to make those either private or protected. We'll go with private uh, in this case. What does it mean by private? By private it means that it is not going to be able to be accessed this attribute by any other class. All right. Now you may wonder well how are we going to set the height and width, or side one and side two of this rectangle. We're going to do it through the getter and setter methods. This simply gives us more control uh, of these attributes. Think of the attributes as sort of the inner workings of the class. You want the class to be like a black box. That is, other components, other classes, other objects need to integrate with the class, but none of those other objects should be able to get inside the class uh, and, and be able to do anything directly with any of the attributes. Instead, we're going to provide methods to do that. 
We can then do things later on like put validation in and make sure, for example, that the height and width is a number that's greater than zero because you can't have a rectangle with a negative five height or something along those lines. Now we're not going to do that in this example, but we want to set the good practice of making all our attributes either private or protected. Uh, right now it doesn't matter because we haven't gotten into inheritance yet. But we're going to go and make this instance variable private for side one, and I'll do the same thing for side two. Now, that means that from my test class, I can't do something like r dot side one equals and then give it some value. Can't do that because that's a private attribute and we'll get a compiler error. Well, our test routine though does need to set the values of these sizes. So how do we do it? We do it through our get and set methods. Again, the idea here is us as a developer of this component is controlling the way that this component is going to be accessed. So we're not going to just let anyone go and manipulate the attributes directly because that could lead to, to issues, that could lead to difficulties. Again, if you think of things like validation rules, and all that is something you'd want to be uh, consistently enforced. So typically you are going to have a setter and a getter for each attribute. The setter is going to take an argument and set the attribute to that value. The getter is going to return the value uh, of that attribute. So I can make a public function doesn't return anything, public void that's called set s1 that's going to set the value of side one attribute and it's going to accept an argument and all this thing is going to do is it's going to take the argument and set side one equal to that argument now again, you might wonder, like, what's the big deal here? But again, if there was any sort of validation or anything that we need to perform when this was set, we could actually do that testing in here and not allow people to access this directly, requiring people instead to go through our public methods because we might have additional code that we want to ha have run every time someone sets aside of this. So we have our set method, and we'll have the same thing for side two. Where we accept an argument and set the value of side two. Correspondingly, there is going to be two get methods so that any other object can ask for the value of those sides. And all this is going to do is return those. This may seem a little bit like overkill, but again, it's definitely good programming practice to do this. And it's a habit that you want to get into even on these simple assignments. You don't want people to be able to access the attributes that you've defined inside your classes. Instead, you're going to provide getter and setter methods to return and um, set those particular attributes. What other methods do we need? Well, what else does a rectangle need to be able to do based on what we define? Well, we, need, we define that a rectangle needs to be able to calculate its area, calculate its perimeter, and tell if it's a, a square or not. I'm going to do one uh, method. I'm going to do one of the methods. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the other two methods. I'm going to do the calculate area method. Not going to accept any arguments. And what is the area of a rectangle? Simply side one times side two. So I declare an integer and say that that integer a equals side one 
times side 2. And then I return that area. So, now we have a reusable component. This rectangle can be plugged in to any application that needs rectangle and needs to be able to do something with a rectangle. All right? We're not just, in other words, answering this specific question that was assigned in the assignment. We are creating a generic component that can be reused. And that's a big thing as far as Java programming goes. In addition to understanding Java, you need to understand the object-oriented process of design and what makes for a good class and, and so on. So now we have that component. It looks right to me, but how do I test it? Well, I can just run this component, right? I need a program to run it. I need a method, or I'm sorry, a class that has a main associated with it that can go in and fire things up, get the ball rolling, and do that. And that's what I'm going to do here. And again, you can think of the Lab 2 class as being sort of a test class. We're going to put our test cases in there. All right? And we're going to create instances of a rectangle. We're going to create specific rectangles, set their property, and then go do uh, our thing on that. Now, there'll be two other methods in here. One to calculate the perimeter, which is going to be similar to the area. It's also going to return an integer, right? And it's going to return the integer, though, that's calculated in a different manner. Instead of taking side 1 times side 2, it's going to take 2 times side 1 plus 2 times side 2. Secondly, there's going to be a, another function that is going to determine whether it's a square or not. All right? How do you determine whether it's a square or not? Well, you need an if statement. If side 1 equals side 2, then it's a square. Otherwise, it's not a square. What's the return value of this? All right. The return value for this should be a Boolean, right? Because the answer, is this a square, is a yes or no question. All right. Sometimes where people are tempted to return a string that could be like, yes, it is a square, no, it's not a square. All right. String isn't really the right answer here. The precise answer is this is a question that can only have two values, yes or no, and therefore we want that return value to be a Boolean because that's what it is. That's the definition of Boolean, is a value that can only take one of two uh, possible states. So, I'll leave you to complete those other two methods. All right, I'm going to give you the head start of the structure of the, the classes. You can go in and create the perimeter and the area function. You'll also be responsible for correcting any typos I made since I can't compile this here. All right, so now what does our test class look like? Well, we've written our generic class for rectangles, and we put in the attributes that are associated with it. We've put in the methods associated with rectangles. Now we have to go out and create some specific rectangles, test it out, and see if it got the right answer. So how do we do that? Well, this is what creates an object of this type. So we say we have a variable called r, which is a storage location, which is going to point to an object, an object being a member of a class, a specific instance of a class. Our particular object r is going to be a rectangle, and we're creating a new rectangle. This isn't some other rectangle that we have laying around, which we actually could do. If we created one rectangle, we could assign another variable to point to the same rectangle. But here, we're creating a new rectangle. What do we have to do? We have to go and call the set methods to set the sides of the different rectangles. So let's say R set 1, R set side 2. And now we have called that method on our rectangle that we've named R. So what that will do is that will set those two attributes. Now we can call the other methods on it. And we could do something like this. Oops.
we can call the calculate air area method on this. Oops. All right. And it will go and do the calculation of the area and concatenate that onto the end of the phrase the area is. All right. You can then go in and you can call the other methods. So once you create the um, circumf uh, not circumference, but uh, perimeter uh, method, you can call the perimeter method to say calc perimeter and display the result of that. The is square method is going to return a boolean. So what you could do with that is you could actually test the value of that and print out one thing. If it's a square, print out something else if it's not. So you could say something like if r is square, assuming that's what you call that method, that's going to return either a true or false. And if it's true, we could print one thing, otherwise would print something else. That's this in a nutshell. That's what you need to do in this lab in a nutshell. Your task, if you did not get full credit, um, if you were a little bit off track on this, is to, to watch this, take the code that I put in, you know, can't promise it's typo free, all right, so make sure you correct any typos, and add the calculate perimeter and is square method to the rectangle class. Then run it through a few tests. Now what do I mean by running through a few tests? Well, we have to make sure all our functions work. So we have to call all our functions and make sure they return the right value. So in this case I would think it would require at least two rectangles to test this. One rectangle that was a square, one rectangle that was not a square. And if both of those calculate the area, and correctly identify whether it's a square or not, then for this assignment that's probably sufficient test cases. Because we're not doing anything with validation or anything like that. All right. If you only ran one test case and it got it right, you might know that the area and perimeter function are correct, but you'd have no way of knowing that, uh, if the is square method was right or not. Right? Because maybe it correctly identifies when something is a square, but does not correctly identify when something is not a square. So really you need to test for both conditions. Developing the test cases really is something that um, you should spend time thinking about. And think about what are the combination of test cases that are going to cover my code completely. And in this case, we definitely need at least two conditions, or, or two test cases, to, t to test the condition of is a square and not a square. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. Again, this sort of goes beyond, you know, sometimes people think, uh, look at a problem and say, well, you know, there's a lot of ways you can solve the same problem. Um, yeah, that's true. And in some cases, uh, if you do it differently than the way I would do it, it, it might be acceptable. But Again, remember there's more to Java programming than simply getting the right answers. All right? Correct object-oriented design where we're developing components that can be reused is important. Um, the kind of solution like I showed uh, initially, again, would give me the right answers for, these, for this particular case. But I would be no better off as far as having a rectangle component that I could use anywhere where I wanted to do stuff with rectangles. All right? And really that's a big part of Java programming is getting the, the classes defined correctly uh, and defining good classes so you have these components um, that you can reuse uh, in other applications or in other parts of this application. If you have questions, please let me know. Uh, again, very important. Um, come in and see me so we can talk about it or send me an email so we can talk about it or let's make sure you get your questions resolved. Uh, again, I apologize for taking a while to grade that lab too, but the upside is, is I'm making this video especially to sort of make up for that. So please take a look at the video. Uh, if you have not um, gotten full credit on this assignment, uh, go back and review it 
and resubmit uh, lab two and, and any other labs that, that you've done uh, incorrectly. All right.